Good. Yeah. All right, let's turn our attention to um, convergence. So, um, hey, everybody, welcome into another Course Key webinar. Uh, my name is Alex Beitzel. I'm the marketing manager at Course Key, and I'm joined today by my colleague, Ariel. She is a product manager. And the two of us are going to be um, taking you through the new tool that we just recently um, released called Conversion, which at its core basically converts asynchronous activities into clock hours. And we're going to into the, in this webinar, we're going to get into the backstory to conversion, um, really why it's important and the benefits that it affords your institution. And then we're going to get to see it in um, uh, in action today a bit later in the webinar. So Ariel is going to take us through the workflow there. So that's coming up um, in just a bit. So before we get started, I have two quick housekeeping notes. The first is that this webinar will be recorded. So anyone who has registered for the webinar, whether you're here with us right now or not, will get the link emailed to their uh, email but, um, tomorrow. The second thing is that we encourage you guys to ask questions. We really want to make sure we, we answer any questions that you have. So if something comes up throughout the webinar, um, throw your question into the chat chat function and or the Q&A, and we'll get to those just on the fly. So don't hold back there. OK, we're really excited to share this with you. Um, this tool is, I think, one of the first of its kind in the market. And Ariel and her team have been working um, on it for a long time, so we're excited to get into it. OK, let's start by taking a step back and kind of setting the scene for how conversion came about. So COVID-19 obviously had a lot of um, permanent impacts on the education landscape, especially in higher ed. And one of those is a widespread adoption of blended and hybrid learning programs. So when we say blended and hybrid learning, we're talking about students completing part of their programs in a synchronous environment um, where they're with their instructor and or, and or their classmates um, on ground or they're on um, a video virtual classroom like what we're doing here. Mm -hmm. And then the second part of that is uh, the asynchronous learning. So completing um, activities either in their LMS uh, or something similar that they're doing on their own and on their own time. So that's what we mean when we talk about, talk about blended and hybrid learning. So blended and hybrid, obviously, um, they have a lot of benefits associated with them, but they can be challenging to administer for a few reasons, um, especially for clock hour schools. And the biggest reason we're going to take a look at today is um, tracking clock hour attendance in an asynchronous environment, which in blended and hybrid learning could be half or more of a student's program. So by definition, asynchronous activities uh, don't have a time value associated with it. So um, tracking clock hour attendance and asynchronous learning uh, is difficult and it requires some heavy lifting on the administrative side. So the first, the first reason why this is challenging is um, it's highly inefficient and sometimes uh, leads to inaccurate uh, calculations of time awarded. So basically, um, administrators are required to manually convert the activity that a student completes into clock hours and then go into the SIS and update the student's profile there manually. And if you have a handful of students and they're all completing uh, multiple asynchronous activities throughout the week, then that can be a big um, time demand on your administrators and a lot of focus that they have to spend there. So it can take up a lot of time. And because it's a human, um, human, it's a manual upload and a human intervention is used, there's always going to be some inaccuracies that can cause some compliance issues. And those are things that we want to avoid. So without a tool, um, they have to do that calculation manually. And then the second bullet here, um, and Ariel, let me know if there's part of this that uh, I don't explain correctly, but without, with the way that the um, systems are set up currently with um, schools having an LMS and an SIS, there's really a lack of visibility and, tr and transparency into a student's total time awarded um, for blended and hybrid learning and the ratio, um, what the ratio is between synchronous and asynchronous time in that time awarded. So because there's no one central place that consolidates those together, 
um, students are really kind of left in the dark on how much they've completed in either syn synchronous or asynchronous and how much they have left to go. And similarly, the admins can't really see right away where students stand and how they've progressed so far. Yeah, I think that's kind of like the biggest point from all this, Alex, is that when you're in a blended program, you know when someone's in front of you, if you can see them in a synchronous environment, how much attendance they have earned. However, when it's asynchronous, you have to do a lot of that manual calculation, like look at their assignments, have yeah. to convert the score, not necessarily the score, but the fact that they did a score into time and then manually up that load that into the SIS, which, as you mentioned, it's inefficient. You can give the wrong calculation. Math is hard. So yeah. There's a there's a lot of places where this process breaks down and yeah. um, that that visibility and transparency across it for students know where they stand like accurately where they stand and same for instructors and admins is the very like it's a very big deal for us and that's what we're really focusing in on. Mm -hmm. And kind of along that exact same line of thought is determining a student's last date of activity and being able to see when they um, last completed an assignment is difficult without a tool like conversion. And really because the update to a student's profile is um, delayed and can take some time, um, it's really hard to determine the last day of activity in real time. Or, yeah, and I, I mean, like, you know, I know we're saying last day of activity and I know some people are thinking, oh, is this an LDA? It's not a technical LDA, right? It's not, it's, we're not calculating LDAs. But we are tracking when's the last time they had an, an attendance thing that, uh, um, or sorry, a qualified event on our system, such as attendance, or they um, submitted an, a, a specific type of assignment on an, the LMS to determine when is their last date of activity or record. That's right. So um, inefficient processes and lack of visibility transparency, those are big challenges with trying to take attendance, um, clock hour attendance in an asynchronous environment. So with those issues in mind, um, our team came up with the conversion tool. And in a few seconds, we're going to see exactly how the conversion tool does all these bulleted um, items here. Um, but essentially what it does is it automatically converts um, asynchronous activities into clock hours. And from there also updates the um, student's profile in SIS automatically with no human intervention necessary. Uh, it consolidates the synchronous and asynchronous time awarded into one place. So it'll take the, the activity a student completes, put it into the, um, their student profile and course key and provide a really simple visual for how much time has been awarded, what the breakdown is between synchronous and asynchronous time and how much the student has left to complete. And we'll get a visual for that in a second. The third one, um, eliminating the manual data entry. So because it's all automated, there's really no need for the administrators to, first of all, calculate the time that, that each activity should be um, should equate to, and then also having to manually enter in that data into the student profile. That's all eliminated, which leads to huge time savings. And then the last part is it provides real-time data about what we were just talking about, the last activity recorded. So there's, I think, a specific view for that, and we'll get to see that in a second. OK, we've done a lot of talking about conversion. Now let's see it in action. So Ariel, if you could pull up the uh, staging so we can take a look at what conversion looks like. I am. I am. I'm going to stop sharing your screen if you're OK with it. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. And to our audience, um, if you have any questions um, already so far, feel free to let us know. And we'll um, answer those before we get cracking onto the conversion tool. Well, I already have it up and running. Um, oh, right there. Cool. Yes. So as um, uh, Alex mentioned, so our conversion tool, like for the most part, it's 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 not really visible to to you, but we display everything for this blended course here in the records for uh, a course in our in our system. So if I go to courses here. I can see the courses that I have. If I have asynchronous, sorry, not asynchronous, if I have synchronous only courses, if I have blended courses, all of that is available here. So if I go into this blended course, I can see the synchronous attendance I have going on. I can handle all that separate. But if I go to records, I now have three different views of the data because um, you know we're bringing in data from your LMS. So 
on these three views, we have overview, synchronous, and asynchronous. Overview is taking into account both the synchronous and asynchronous attendance um, portions and kind of aggregating it and giving you an, a, a holistic view as to what's happening in this course. So the first little chart we have here is the course distribution of total time awarded. So, I mean, keep in mind, all this is fake data. This is not real data, but in this one, we are tracking to look at how much time a student has completed of their course, their total time. So at the beginning of a course, it's going to be close to 0, 20%, but as the course progresses, it should come closer to the 81 and 100, and you can start identifying as the course goes on any deviance. So you can start seeing like, okay, well, five kids are, or sorry, five students are here at 50% attendance awarded, well, another 15 students are here in 80 percent what happened what's going on so i can look at that in the table below and get more of the details the other um, interesting chart that we have here is the distribution of last activity recorded so remember i kind of mentioned like this is just tracking when was the last date we have some sort of qualified attendance activity for a student um, on our system or through the lms um, you can see if it was over three days ago for four students that's that's not really good on um, one to three days go for three students or less than one day for eight students. Um, again, all this stuff is kind of down here in this table, which is again, an aggregate between the asynchronous and synchronous view. We see the total time awarded out of the course total for the students in my course, and I can always sort this. Like if I wanna see, okay, look at who has zero, or who has less, who's falling behind. Um, I'm gonna just put this back on the student side. How, what's the total percent of the course they've completed? So this is just another view of the same information here. How much has been awarded this week? So we know that that's one of the ways that administrators, instructors are tracking student progress by how much time they have completed per week. So for this week, Mark has completed four hours and 38 minutes. He was supposed to complete five hours. So we can see that he's a little bit um, behind, or you can see all the other students who have not completed anything this week. Um, we have missed time. So like, you know, looking at how much time is possible or has been possible, how much has been awarded, how much is, is in the past and cannot be remade. And again, we have the percentage view of that. And as you can kind of see, we have the export option here. On most of our tables and um, on course scan and on our reports, we allow you to be able to export information and look at it yourself. Like, you know, if you want to run a pivot table on Excel or, or something, we give you the raw data. Um, the last column here again is that LAR. So in this course, I can see when was the last activity for these students. So I can see here, Alex last had something on 422, but then uh, this other student on 327, and I apologize, it's just because I have a very weird screen size right now. Here we go. Al another Alex on 327 last had a, uh, an activity. So again, you can kind of look and you can um, have faster, um, I, I guess what's the right word? Like you can get those information, that information faster. Instead of having to look and manually um, find the, the when student last did something, you can just find it here on the page, right? You don't have to look in SIS, you don't have to reach out to a student, you don't have to look on LMS, it's right here. Um, which as Alex mentioned, that's the biggest issue that we've heard with conversion is just that one thing's on one system, another thing's on another system, how do we bring them together? Where do we have that single source of truth? Yeah, and Ariel, just to um, hammer, hammer that point a little bit more, uh, if, if it takes two days for an admin to update a student's profile in the SIS, then that's two days that they might not have been um, doing any activities that's, uh, that will be visible in the LAR and two days can is can be a make or break for some students depending on how close they are to dropping out and how much time they've already awarded so that absolutely. having that, that in real time is um, a game changer absolutely um and like i said now we have the breakdown you have the synchronous and asynchronous view and right now i'm just showing you guys like the full course um book records across like you know all the students and we'll break in and show you the individual ones in a second um the synchronous time we have the totals we have the details so the same stuff here if you want to see the lar we, we bring that everywhere we bring it everywhere we know how important it is and how um the visibility of that is is incredibly important for administrators for students for instructors to be proactive and reach out 
Um, we have the total time awarded now from the synchronous side. So, you know, you have, as Alex mentioned, you have like maybe 40% of your class is synchronous, 60% is asynchronous. You, you tally those differently. Those are calculated separately. So we have them separated out here. So your total time awarded, Alex is 13 hours of synchronous. It's 2% of what his course total is, but he's also had four and a half hours of makeup, 800 hours missed. We have all the information here. And if we go to the details, you can see for each of the individual classes, how much time was awarded for students. So you can see on this day, we had um, uh, some students being awarded time, some not having any time. If it's blank, we just have like, you know, a little, little empty, empty view here. Um, but as you guys kind of know in our system, we have our little icons where if someone, if a student did not check out, we do not award them time so they don't get the full time they could have earned for the course, right? We don't know what time they were supposed to leave or what time they did. Um, and as well, we have the little blue flags if something is modified. And, and there's an export. Again, we, we, we want you to have everything visible on here, but if you need to take it out, you want to play with an Excel with a CSV file, by all means. Um, and another, share huh? Oh, yeah, and to, to share with other people. Means, yeah. Uh, last kind of interesting tidbit here is this asynchronous view. So here is where you can kind of see the breakdown of asynchronous assignments, who's completed them, and who's getting awarded time for it. So we are not looking at scores. When we're awarding time, we are just looking as, as to whether a student submitted it on time okay we're not touching scores we're not like if they get a zero um we we don't we don't go around the student academic progress we don't touch that but we can show you the visibility as to who's submitting open and closed activities right you have an open activity on your lms when you decide to have something active you can choose to have everything active at the same time or you can do like five activities per week whatever the instructor however your course is structured um, so on this one, all of everything, everything is closed. So it's like a light green here. But if I had any open activities, I would see a darker green. So for all of these closed activities, I only had one or two students submit it when 30 or sorry, 29 should have submitted it. And it was due, this one in particular was due February 17th. This one was due in the February 16th. I can look through all the assignments for my course and see them on here. Oops. Sorry, I always hate when things pop up on my screen. I try to hide them. Um, and then we have kind of like this view below. So here's another table view. I now this is kind of looking at the weekly open, or not necessarily weekly, but the open activities, how much students have completed. So if you have um, 10 activities for a student to do for that are open, you can track and see like, hey, Alex has done nine or he's done uh, eight of them. And you can see across other students where they stand. So again, it's kind of giving you the means to be more proactive. And I apologize. I thought this had actual values on it. Um, but you also, again, have the totals and the details view here, right? So you can always see overall outside of the open activities where everything stands. So this is how much time they've been awarded for completing the asynchronous activities, how much they've missed, and our favorite guy, the LAR again. You go to the details, you can see for each assignment how much time they were awarded. So you see zero here because it was not submitted or submitted late. Um, but we have an hour 52 going for this assignment because it was submitted on time for these users. So I'll go ahead and click into um, your profile, Alex, here. Ooh. And I know, right, on this view, I see that same I can see that same open activities one, but now I have a little breakdown. I see the breakdown of the time being awarded, excuse me, um, to the student in this blended course and how it's all broken down. I have the synchronous time being uh, awarded. So this is my check-in, check-out of class, how much time I got, and also my synchronous makeup. So like, okay, if I missed a couple of classes, but I made them up, I, I submitted the assignment, I got the sign up from an administrator, I can see the makeup on here. Asynchronous awarded, missed time, open activities awarded, remaining course time. I think the remaining course time is kind of like the, the very interesting one here because we're taking into consideration how much time you've missed. I'm um, sorry, not sorry, not the time that you've missed that you can't recuperate. This is what you have as a potential moving forward. I've got so, a long way to go. So um it's 
this is kind of like, you know, an aggregated view. And then we have the asynchronous details here with the synchronous details as well. So if I need to see, you know, what you did on a specific, uh, like uh, a course. So on this course here, you check or an instructor checked you in, but there was no checkout. You don't get any time, right? Um, mm -hmm. If I go back, that's kind of like, you know, how we, how we show our synchronous side. If I go to asynchronous, I can see here, there was a special quiz that was due on 319 and completed on 216. I can see at 130, you submitted this assignment, the special quiz. And for that, you got awarded an hour and 52 minutes. And this is calculated right now by the number of assignments that are in a course divided by the total time possible for a course. So for example, if you have 100 assignments um, in a course that is 100 hours, each assignment is going to be worth one hour. We are working on this, and I don't know if this was kind of like mentioned earlier, Alex, but um, you know, conversion is not like a one-time deal for us, right? We are building it out. This is the first phase of it. Now we're trying to focus, um, you know, first phase was of, of the blended, and then we're going to focus on asynchronous and distance learning. And then we're going to be working on how do we assign individual amounts of time? So mm -hmm. instead of having each assignment worth like, you know, one hour and 52, we know that assignments can be worth different amounts of time or varying amounts of time, depending on what type of assignment it is. Right. So that's something that we will be working on in the future, but that's how it's currently being calculated. So if I go here on quiz 13, you can see that it was completed on 216 at 930 AM, but it was also due 216 for it was late. So you get no time. Dang. OK. Um, and an interesting also thing to note for this is that like we we are showing only the asynchronous things that have already been done in the past. What we're also showing too is this noted. So there are some qualifying attendance activities that students are not awarded time, but if they did it, they get, um, it, it's, it's kind of a, a qualifying event for us to update their last activity recorded date. So for example, um, the student sent a message on this date, so on 2-2, the student sent a message at 1.02 and at 1 or 10.30 a.m. and another message at 10.30 a.m. Three messages were sent on the LMS system which were not necessarily supposed to be awarded time, but since the student interacted in a meaningful way with the LMS, we're using that as a, an activity uh, recorded. So that would count for the LAR, right? Correct, correct. Okay. So like we understand there's some activities are gonna be awarded time, some are not. But again, we're trying to get that visibility as to what a student is doing in the LMS, in the asynchronous environment and put, putting that in front of the instructors, administrators, and even the students themselves. So they know that we're, we're tracking, well, not necessarily that we're tracking them, but that we're recording that they are participating in the course. And they can see on their student app, um, basically the, the same um, information that's being shown yes. here. Yes, everything that we show to the instructors and administrators, mine for the individual student is on the student's profile. Like we're not showing the student what every other student did, but this um, view, this view is available to the student. They see all the stuff. They see how they were awarded time. And we also show them, you know, again, like if anything was modified, any records, the reason why they got the time that they got. And it kind of like uh, brings me into like wanting to show the last activity recorded. So we understand that this is such a wonderful feature. It shouldn't just be for conversion. We open this up for everyone. So this is your last activity recorded across an entire campus, all the students. So if I wanna see for this location here, I can see when was the last time a student completed something and what it is that they did. So for uh, David Hunter here, he did an act attendance on 310. That's the last time that we had any record for him uh, or her. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to move away from the pronouns, I apologize. Um, or you can see here an assignment was the last thing that we saw for, for Poe Furious, again on 323. And I understand that like, you know, these are very, very large numbers. So maybe you wanna look at the ones that you can actually be more proactive against. So let's look at five, like, you know, let's say two to five days. 
I can limit it down here. I can limit my view. I can see students who have two to five days that we haven't seen anything from them. And I can yeah. you know, hover over and I can see their email address if I need to reach out to them. And I can kind of see again, what was the last thing that they did, whether it was an assignment or whether it was an attendance. And that's that's really, really good because um, what we've seen, what we've heard from clients too, is that if you can start that outreach um, as soon as possible and get in contact with them, um, even a day in advance or hours in advance, that's going to have a big impact on potentially bringing them back to class and keeping them on track to graduate. Mm -hmm. And and as always, we have a little export if you need to to uh, export, play around, put a pivot and see maybe uh, something's going on here. Maybe there's a similarity, maybe it's a course. So you can group and see information. That's all I have here. I'm gonna stop sharing. Very cool. Okay, I'll go back to the presentation. I know it says Hannah's wake right there, but it's still Alex, trust me. Okay, so basically at its core, um, our conversion tool is really meant to make taking attendance and hybrid and blended learning programs uh, much easier and in turn, make it a lot easier to administer blended and hybrid learning. So how it simplifies it is by eliminating that manual conversion calculation. Um, we don't want any errors there. We don't want people taking their time trying to do math and um, having to do that multiple times per week or even per day. It provides visibility into synchronous and asynchronous time awarded, um, which is great for students to keep themselves responsible for their, um, for their program and for admins to see, oh, this student needs to finish more of their um, asynchronous assignments um, before a certain date. It updates student profiles in the SIS automatically. So any, ch any changes that occur, say a student completes a quiz, um, Coursey is going to notice that and update the student's profile in the SIS automatically. So no human intervention needed. And the last one here, like we just said, um, easily determining the LAR, the last activity recorded, so that you can see which students, if any, you need to intervene with or uh, reach out to them to, to make sure that they are completing parts of their program. So we encourage anyone um, on the call who either is thinking about administering blended or hybrid learning or already does so and is experiencing some of the challenges that we, um, that we talked about, that we identified. Um, we encourage you to uh, meet with our, with our team, request a demo at www.coursekey.com or you can um, indicate in our post webinar survey that you'd like to see a demo. Uh, we really want to uh, meet with you to understand the the challenges you're facing and how we can help your school um, get over those. So um, that's really it for conversion. That's all we have for you guys. So I'd like to thank everyone for spending part of your day with us. Um, we really appreciate you guys showing up to these webinars. It means a lot to us, it means a lot to me. Uh, and I wanna thank Ariel too for helping with the presentation and for showing us uh, conversion in action. Thanks, Ariel. My pleasure. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great day. If you have any follow up questions, you can email me at alex at um, Until next time. Thanks. Errol, you, you will have, have to end it. The webinar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>